Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to upload an assignment on behalf of a student in order to use plagiarism or rather similarity detection software. For example, Turnitin or SafeAssign. So I'm going to go to my sandbox course and create some new assignments. So this is my home page, and when a student signs in, this is the stuff that they'll see. Instead of posting my sort of dummy assignment that I want to submit things to on the home page, I'm going to create a new place to submit it. So I'm going to create a content area that's my stuff, and I'm not going to generally make this available to users. I already did that. Here it is. So this is a blank space where I can post anything that I want that isn't visible to my students. Okay, so now I'm going to create two assignments. I'm going to create a basic assignment, and this comes with a similarity detection software called SafeAssign. And then I'm going to create a Turnitin direct assignment, which of course has Turnitin software. So let's start with the assignment. Scroll down and look at the settings to give it some kind of grade. And then there's couple of options here. The only one that's really relevant to us is submission details. For what it's worth, I like to create unlimited attempts and then just use this as anytime I want to check a student's paper or piece of writing, I copy and paste it into this and you can submit multiple times and look at stuff. So unlimited is one option. Okay, plagiarism tools. Check submission for plagiarism using SafeAssign. You can allow students to see things. This is probably not relevant if you're trying to look for their obviously plagiarized paper and find their sources. The other thing you can do is exclude submissions from the global database. And whether or not you do this depends on where you stand on intellectual property and such. OK, so again, we created an assignment and we just the only thing you really need to select is check submissions for plagiarism, but I recommend allowing yourself to submit as many things as you want here. Okay, I've created an assignment. Now, if I want to submit something to this assignment, I have to do it in student preview mode. However, where I put this thing, I generally am going to keep this link hidden. So if I'm a student and I sign in, I'm not going to see any of this, my stuff here. This is my sort of private space. But when I want to go submit something, it has to be visible to the test student and thus to students as a whole. So I'm going to show the link and enter student preview. And now I can go to my stuff. And here's this assignment. And as a test student, I'll submit the thing that I want to submit. So I'm going to browse my computer, and I've got a sample copy and paste paper ready to go here so we can look at the similarity detection tools. When the student submits, it'll show you what they've submitted. And now I'm going to exit preview. And I'll probably just hide the link immediately again. OK, so now I want to go look at the thing I just submitted. I'm going to go down to I'm going to hide all these tools. I'm going to go down to Grade Center, Full Grade Center, and look at my assignment. Now, if you go look at it immediately, the results probably are not going to be ready. Oh, but they are. Sometimes it'll say that it's still working on it, but it doesn't take too long. So let's look at our match results. So click on Safe Assign, View Originality Report, and here's what we'll see. Anything that is highlighted is similar to something it found either online or in a global database of things students have submitted in the past, or in essay journals or whatever. Check those too. The fact that something is highlighted does not mean it is a verbatim match to something. It means that it is similar to something. So when you click on it, if it's an internet source, 
it'll show you a side-by-side -side of the two. And so in this one, we can see it is absolutely verbatim. And it's also, of course, going to find properly cited quotations, right? So this is one way to see that a student's paper is entirely direct quotations, which is its own non-plagiarism problem. But point being is you can get a sense of how similar it is. But again, just the fact that it's highlighted doesn't mean it's verbatim. Like it won't leave out little words that don't match. It'll just highlight the whole thing as pretty dang close. So you can look at the different um, sources side by side, the bits that are highlighted, or you can go look at the tools over here. So under the matches, anything that's purple comes from something called Essay Company. That's probably not good. One thing that you can do is open the matching source and see that it is indeed from an Essay Company. You can find the, the relevant bit or anything that's in yellow here is from Wikipedia, and anything that's in teal is from the Internet Encyclopedia of Philosophy, and there are some other colors. Uh, matches to student papers. Oftentimes, matches to student papers are things that students have found on the Internet, so sometimes there will be overlap. You can hide certain matches if you want to just look at one kind of match. And if you want to put them back, you can go to exclude excluded sources and it'll put them all back. Okay, so that's the basic set of tools for safe assign. And if it's an egregious case of copying and pasting from the internet, and stuff that's in its database, it's really easy to use. Okay. So let's go back to create a Turnitin assignment. So again, I'm going to do this in my little hidden my stuff area. I'm going to create a Turnitin assignment. And this one test assignment too. Doesn't matter what points you give it. Let's see. There's a bunch of stuff that you have control over that you can look at in detail, but I'm not going to look at any of this, so it won't really matter for our purposes. The one thing you definitely want to have selected is that you generate reports immediately rather than later, because you want to look at it immediately, presumably, when you're submitting on behalf of a student. And again, you can also decide whether or not the thing you submit goes into a repository or not. Okay, so once an assignment is created, we end up in the sort of assignment area. How we would get back to this, let's say we are from the home page, we go to my stuff, we view the assignment. This is that same area we were, that it brought us to right after we created the assignment. And this is where you can submit an assignment on behalf of a particular student. In contrast with the previous example where we submitted an assignment as a test student, which means that it's not connected to any particular student and no student will see the thing we submitted. With Turnitin here, we are submitting an assignment on behalf of a particular student, and that student will see that a thing has been submitted on their behalf. So if this was a real course and not a sandbox, the student names would populate here and you could select the student and submit the paper for them, upload the file that you have, and submit. But we can't do that as an example because this course has no students. And to the best of my knowledge, there's no way to submit a paper to turn it in on behalf of a dummy student or a sample, like a test student, and then look at it, which means I also can't demonstrate how to use the tools on a test student. I can only do it on one of my actual students, um, which I'm not going to do because I don't feel like figuring out how to hide all their names and personal information. Okay, so that completes my basic overview of how to create assignments so you can submit a paper on behalf of a student. The easiest way to do a quick check is to create a simple assignment and use SafeAssign, 
but it is possible to use Turnitin. And if you do want to go that route, there are many instructional videos on once you've submitted the assignment, how to actually use the similarity detection tools like we demonstrated with SafeAssign.